we're going to uh, take a look at some of the materials. Now, as I said, some of the materials came through uh, from SketchUp. Uh, and you'll notice if we open our material editor, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and open the, uh, there are two types of material editors. There's a slate material editor, which is a node-based material editor. There's a compact material editor. Uh, for now, I'm going to use the compact material editor. And I'm going to use that right there. And so here's our material palette. Now, if you hit X on your keyboard, it'll toggle through the size of your materials. I like to have it as large as I, I can get it so I can see what my materials look like. Now, it's a misconception that uh, the materials in your slots right here are the materials in your scene. And if you don't have any materials in your slots, you don't have any materials in your scene. That's not true. There's always, as long as you have a material applied to your objects in Max, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have your scene materials in, in the space and it doesn't have to be in your, uh, in your slot editor. So these are, you can think of these materials as just placeholders for your materials. So if you click on this right here, this is the Get Material button. It will show you all the materials in your scene. And these are your scene materials. And these are all the materials that came in from SketchUp. You'll also notice that they're arc and design materials. So it's, it's, native, it's a native mental ray uh, material. And it also shows you all the objects that are applied to that material. So if you want to edit those properties, you can select one of your empty spots, your slots right there, and you can double click. And that's anodized metal. And so it just applied it right there. There's also another way you can do it. And this is the way I like to do it. You pick the, uh, the color picker or the eyedropper, and you can just pick on any object. And we're going to have to switch from get camera to, uh, to select all to so be able to pick it up. And we're going to select the floors. And you'll see it, it selected this object called Multi Group 05. Now it comes up with this name, and it's an arbitrary name. Uh, for applying, this is a multi-sub object material. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to understand what this is. And I'll open the Slate Material Editor to give you a better idea of what, what that really is. So if we go to Mode, and you, and you click Slate Material Editor, this is, uh, this is new uh, to 3ds Max. And uh, what's nice about it is it shows you exactly what you're looking at. So this is our sample slot. If we click and drag, this multi-sub object into the space here. I'm going to say instance. And uh, this is an instance, meaning that we're going to copy that same material over and not make a copy of it. So now you can see really what's going on. So we have a series of Arkin Design materials. And these are all the materials from SketchUp. So, so this is a slate material. This is the default SketchUp material. So any of my walls that were white, like a drywall, or an object that I left white in SketchUp, this is the default SketchUp material. This is concrete, and this carpet, and this is the wood floor. So it's important to name them because that way you know exactly what the materials are. And so you can see that these are multi-sub object materials because it has multi-materials, and they're applied into this. This is a kind of a container for those different materials. So this material actually gets applied to that object. So now if I select this floor here and I hit Alt-Q to isolate the selection, you can see that I've got all those different, they're all floor materials. Now if I go to, if I hit P to go to perspective, I toggle around, you can see that these are the different materials that are in that multi-sub object material. So I've got my wood, this is my slate, this is my carpet, and all of those are applied to that one object material. So this, this material gets applied to this single object, and they all have different IDs. And so you can see these IDs right here are applied for, to different faces in Max. So how do you find out what IDs are what? Well, we don't really need to know that because we've already textured it in, in SketchUp. I'll go ahead and show you anyways. Select your mesh, and then select Polygon, and then select a face. And you scroll down, and you'll see it says ID. And so ID, you can go back to your material editor, and I'll tell you one. Come back up here, and you'll see that's my slate material. So it gives you, it, it tells you what ID is assigned to what material. Now you can you can create all this in Max, but we already did all the hard work in, in SketchUp. So now all we have to do is just basically edit the materials. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So let's go back to this camera view and we're going to start editing the materials. So I like working with the camera view because really I don't have to worry about a material that I can't see. So uh, let's say I want to edit the, the wood floor. I already selected the material and I'm going to come down here and choose wood floor. Now that's going to take me inside the wood floor material. Now you'll notice it may seem very dark uh, a lot of the times that's because uh, we have to adjust our gamma settings. Now if you go to uh, rendering and gamma right here, gamma slash uh, look or lookup table setup, <clears throat> it's 3ds Max by default has already figured out what kind of gamma settings it needs. And for me to explain this it'd be a whole nother course but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave it on at the default <clears throat> and all we're gonna do is check effect color selectors and effect, uh, and effect material editor. When you do that, now the, the materials will get colored uh, to the way that you should be able to see them in the screen and the way they're going to render. <clears throat>